Okay, so this is lesson four, part B. So you should only be watching this if you have read chapters one, two, and three, and you've completed the tasks for the other chapters. So let's get started. Our learning intention, just to recap, was to learn about perspective in narratives. So we need to know what all those things mean. And our success criteria, we can explain how a change in narrative perspective changes the way we view characters and events in a story. And we can explain how different perspectives make a story more interesting. And finally, that we can create a story with different perspectives for ourselves. Okay, so first things first, what is a perspective? So in art and drawing, perspective is to do with the way you place lines and you focus on where someone would be looking at something from. So we've got an example here of a drawing done using a perspective with a horizon. And all the time in drawings, this is what you're looking at, right? Where, where are you seeing the image from? And therefore, how do you draw the lines, okay? It's similar in English. It's about where you are seeing things from, a point of view. So people have different points of view all the time over everything. So here we've got like this fun little picture where one person is seeing four and one person is seeing three. It's just about where they're seeing it from. Arguably, neither one of them is wrong and neither one of them is right. They just see it from a different angle. And our perspectives can change. Oh, different people can be jealous of different things as shown in this image. I know that if you told me a month ago I could have just stayed home answering emails and making videos, I'd have been really excited, but now it doesn't seem so great because my perspective on it has changed based on my experiences. So it's the same in narratives. Now, we also talk about perspective when we talk about first person, second person and third person perspective in narratives. But that's not really what I'm asking people to look at today. Just for a recap, first person is when we use I or we, second person is when you use you, and third person is he, she, it or they, talking about something from the outside. So if you think the easiest way for me to remember it is first person shooter games are games where you see through the eyes of your character, and third person platformers are when you can see the entire body of the character from the outside. It's about moving a little bit further away from the character that you're dealing with. So narrative perspective is point of view, the view from which the narrator tells the story. And the main two principles are that narrative perspectives can shift and that narrators are not always reliable. I'd like you to just take a minute to copy this slide down so that you've got all the information written somewhere. So just pause the video and jot it down. Okay, so we've had a narrative shift between all three chapters so far. Before, we were on the outside of the cage with Red and Slim, and we were looking in at the creatures. That's where our perspective was from. Everything seemed relatively normal. It was a little bit old-fashioned, but it's the world basically as we know it. Now we're seeing from a different narrative perspective. We're seeing from the perspective of the explorer and the merchant, who are two extremely small creatures on this planet. Before we thought they were little creatures and now we're kind of seeing that they're intelligent life forms. This means we've had an entire shift in perspective from where we were before. Even the grass that Red picked up and ripped apart earlier is changed completely. It's now thick stalk. It would be impossible for the characters that we're dealing with now to be able to casually rip the grass apart like Red did in chapter one. So there's an interesting shift here. We're seeing things in a completely different way. The children who were previously small and young and naive now seem like giant towering monsters that are incredibly powerful. That's a huge change. And I want you to write down three things that are different because of the narrative perspective and have a think about what that does to the story. Does it make it more interesting to see things from a different point of view? Let's have another quick look at our learning intentions then. So our learning intention today is to learn about perspective in narratives. So we've talked about the fact that perspectives are seeing things from different points of view, which can give us clarity. So we now know that the creatures in the cage are intelligent. This teaches us a lot about what's going on in the story. We get different perspectives and this gives us different information. And I want you to think about your own house and all the people that live in it and all the creatures that live in it as well. If you've got any pets, I want you to think about the pets in your house and what their life is like, what their perspective is like. 
If you don't have any pets, you might want to think about different creatures that might come into your house maybe uninvited. Hopefully you don't have mice, but a lot of the time um, flies tend to come in, especially during this time of year. I've had a bizarre number of bees come into our house. And when I think about the perspective of a bee, my house is probably a lot more threatening than it is to me. They seem to be able to get in and can never get out. So the perspective of a bee would be a really interesting thing to be able to get inside of. I want you to take a little bit of time now to create a piece of writing from the perspective of an animal in your house. It could be a pet, it could be a creature that's in there that's not supposed to be in there, like a bee, a fly or a mouse, but I want you to describe an area of your house from the perspective of a creature. So it doesn't have to be in first person, it doesn't have to be I went into the bath and the bath was enormous, it can still be in third person like Asimov does in youth, but it still needs to be putting across the perspective of something unusual. Your piece should be at least half a page long, but it can be as long as you like. Just take a bit of time to write a piece of writing from the perspective of an animal in your house. Okay, so we've ended the lesson. So our learning intention was to learn about perspective in narratives. And our success criteria were to be able to explain how a change in narrative perspective changes the way we view characters and events in a story, which we did. We looked at how we've learned new things through the introduction of these new characters and these new perspectives. We need to be able to explain how different perspectives make a story more interesting, which again we have done by looking at our text in particular. And you've created a story with different perspectives, the perspective of an animal in your house. So that's the end of the lesson. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.